Okay, okay. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast, powered by Weapon Wheel Patreon. I am your host, Best Bot Kid Smooth, and my co host in the green, in the yeah. ILP green. There's not a lot of these shirts, actually. Lord For a long time, addict. we didn't sell green. For a long time, we didn't sell green shirts. Why not? You didn't want to seem biased? No, it was just... Uh, at first, I think it was Teespring didn't offer green ones. And then we gave Tim Dog one. Ironically, we gave Tim Dog one. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, he was the only person with a green ILP shirt. Even we didn't have them. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I got purple, yellow, black, white, and maybe blue. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, what have you been uh getting? Oh, actually, before we get started, let me swallow um these true fruit chocolate cover raspberries. Right. But hold on, how, how, we can't even get through five minutes of a podcast about you eating. Let me say this. Let me say this though. Just uh, take a moment. Um, uh, earlier this week. Uh, we lost someone in the community, uh, Big Mike, uh, Michael Long. Um, he was a part of the Platform Podcast. I've been on a, uh, the podcast, I think, a couple of times. He's always been a part of uh, some of the chat, a lot of my challenges. Um, someone messaged me and said one of, his, um, one of my favorite moments of his, uh, one of his favorite moments of mine was the <laughs> the hot chip challenge and whatnot. He would always put it in a Discord and whatnot. But um, I just wanted to say... Uh, rest in peace, Mike. Um, you know, I'm praying for his family. Uh, but he, they, there's a GoFundMe. Um, I will, um, we should have it linked, you know, when it's uh, go live. There's a GoFundMe for him for funeral services. I'm not sure what happened. I think it's live now. It, it, it is. No, I'm talking about when this video, uh, the podcast goes yeah. live. Um, I'm not, you know, sure what happened. Um, but what I want to, um, say is some of the things is about like why. Personally, I go on as much, you know, hiatuses that I do, like where I step away is because a lot of us as like gamers, we do, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of our time, you know, gaming, playing video games, you know, being confined to our our desks, our, our chairs or, you know, our living room setup and putting hours and upon hours into like games. And then when we're not playing games, we're behind uh, a desk talking about them in a podcast or in video form or, and or sitting down sitting, working at, yeah. at work. And I think it's in, very important um, as humans, as individuals that, you know, you get that break, you get up, you, you know, walk around, you get uh, fresh air, get the access, get that family time, uh, a, a break from it. Cause we can get lost into it and also to check up, on yourself and get checked out. Um, I'm notorious for always going uh, uh, to the doctors and stuff like that just to see, um, uh, you know, just to make sure everything's cool. And I always advocate for everyone uh, to do to do just that because you know health is is wealth. Again, I don't know what was the case with uh, Big Mike, but it made me think about it a lot. And um, you know, it kind of it it it, it, bothered, it bothered me when I read it. And um, it had me feeling feeling down for you know a couple of days, but you know my prayers are with his family. And then as like you know overall as a community as gamers, let's um, you know promote health, promote wealth, get out the get outside the doors. I mean, video games a a, a fun ha hobby, but we do have to take breaks. We do have to you know check up on us, and we do have uh, an, another you know life to live. Um, and and we want to make sure that we are you know available to do that and um hopefully you know we find out you know more and if there's any way we can help you know i'm willing to do that but shout out to mike you're awesome ben like i said like i was i thought i was like i thought i was reading something like an, an error or something when it came across but um but yeah shout out to the platform everybody i know they're you know hurt by this so um we're gonna get the uh, show going unless attic you got something to say yeah the good the thing i like the most about this particular situation is like it shows that like when si like stuff is like extremely serious in this community like we put this like this plastic stuff behind 
us. Like, for the most part, when I've seen like really dire situations, like the community ain't on that. Oh, he played on Xbox. He played on PlayStation, and I I do appreciate that when stuff gets real, this community comes together and you know doesn't consistently do the foolishness that they do. Okay. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um. I just want to make sure you're che- can you check your mic source? I don't know if it's coming from your mic or somewhere else. It just sounds like I don't know if it's very loud or like you, you should only it's loud. It's a lot like as in I hear like a lot of like background noise. Do you hear like the Is that better? Psh- say something again? Is that better? Y- yeah, it's, it's better. I just want to make sure, but it's coming from your mic though, right? Yeah. Hello. 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 Yeah. Okay. Say something again. I just turned, I turned it down a little bit so it didn't pick up uh, around me as much. <clears throat> okay, fair enough. Um, what have you been playing, my my friend? Dead Rising, like an excessive amount of it. Mm-hmm. I'm actually going to stream it a little bit more uh, today. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, curious to. I didn't play the original Dead Rising, and this is like the first time I've really jumped in it, and mm-hmm. you know, playing this like updated version i will say this is a very good dead rising uh I'm surprised they called it a remaster because i felt like it's a one-to-one remake got, yeah if i felt like they could have got uh rid of, they could have got away with naming this remake because like no nah, because they they have too many good examples of an actual remake their resident evil's attempts were actual remakes this is a one-to-one remaster it's the same exact game just running in re5 so it looks better and they added the ability to move the shoot move and aim at the same time the controls are a little bit better but they didn't add anything they didn't remove everything we still got those same loading screens like this is how remasters should be like Mm -hmm. claimed but we went through the whole xbox one generation with like bad examples of remasters mm-hmm. that I'm looking at it from like the standpoint that's like, damn, like, you know, this is an actual remaster, but because we had so many bad examples from like the sleeping dogs remaster and, mm-hmm. and all those other ones, this was like a remake because yeah. most of the time when you play like something, they deem a remaster. It's Oh, you know, a little bit updated. Uh, the graphics look a little bit better, but for the most part, it plays exactly the same. Yeah, fair enough. It's a fair assessment. I've been playing that. Now, last month I did play Dead. Now, be, uh, what happened was right before, like, I think um, Outlaws came out. I think I started Dead Rising, the, the original game, but the Xbox One port. And I played up until pretty much all of Case 1. And I did the same thing in my stream a couple of nights ago with the DRDR, played all the way to Case 1. I do want to do a comparison video, but um, no, this is this is this is good. Um, I'm disappointed they didn't add any co-op to it, but um, overall, it's it's, it's good. It's a uh, it's a modern input to the game. I'm I don't like the 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 load screens. So the, they're fast. Yeah, there's a there, there there's a lot of them. They're constant. They're very constant. Very 360 era ish. So. So if it was a remake, I think th- th- they would have gotten rid of those and reworked um, some of the story beats there. But overall, it's a fun game. It's a good game. Shout out to Capcom for providing us with um, a review code for the game. Um, I mean, I plan on trying to play the rest of the game through stream. I struggle with DR1. Um, DR3 and like I said, DR4 are my favorites, but I think I should be able to play because it feels modern. It's approachable. Um, and it looks good. I think they did a good job that uh, RE engine is doing wonders for uh, Dead Rising. And hopefully they do the same exact thing with Dead Rising 3. That's all. I don't want Dead Rising 2. I want Dead Rising 3 redone exactly like this. They're, that would be They're going to give you D3, awesome. uh, D2 long before D- Dead Rising 3. And, and, and uh, uh, when it comes to Dead Rising Four, just skip that. We don't even need to go back to that one. Dead Rising Four was uh, was the d- d- did it was the worst by far. It wasn't the, the worst tra- uh, of the. Uh, it wasn't the, the worst. I think two was the. I think two is the worst. I think Dead Rising. No. Dead Rising Three was the best. Dead Rising Four was the second best, and, and then Dead. I think Dead Rising One just out of legacy, 
And then Dead Rising 2 is my least favorite. I think I'm starting to lean more towards Dead Rising 1's the best. I don't know why. Well, because like, well, you're I'm playing, really... you're, you're replaying a modernized version I, of I just, it. I just recently played Dead Rising 2. But yeah, if, I mean, if you're going to add this one into the mix, but... Um, but I just like how Dead Rising 1 mm -hmm. feels like like a Resident Evil vibe. Like, it feels serious. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of the same, like, uh, you know, the musical tones that mm -hmm. they put in Resident Evil. Like, it feels like you're legitly in a, like, an actual, like, zombie apocalypse. Dead Rising 3 felt that way to a degree, but Dead Rising 4, I mean, 2 felt like a parody of 1, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. It didn't feel like it was like a serious tone game. Dead Rising 3 was a little bit more of a serious tone. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't like Dead Rising 4, like not even a little bit. That's definitely the worst one by far. I would say either 1 and 3 are around the same. I do put 2 a little bit below um, 3 because I enjoyed uh, the series tone of 3. But I feel mm. like 2, I just had so much fun playing 2. It's hard to like put that like far below uh, 2 and 3, or 1 and 3. Yeah, um, no, I, th I think they're all, you know, all great. I want Capcom to continue to invest in Dead Rising. It's my favorite franchise from Capcom, like, ever. Um, um, you know, obviously Resident Evil is, you know, good. I know other people like the Monster Hunters and stuff like that. I like Lost Planet, um, uh, but Dead Rising is definitely my go-to Capcom, uh, game um and i know they got a, a a bunch of stuff you know street fighter and everything that that's all um that's all all that that's pretty much good from uh capcom so um there's a a couple things coming up right there's a tokyo game show i think it's next next week yeah tokyo game shows next week and supposedly that state of plays next week as well Okay, and that's where they're gonna show off like some PS5 Pro games, right? Mm -hmm. um, Tokyo Game Show. Everybody gets really hyped because I think every year. Phil, by the way, just want to give you guys every year. Phil Spencer does the little small video clip to tell everybody in Japan to tune in to Xbox uh, Tokyo Game Show stream. It, it, what's it, funny is like even though I like that you know he takes the time to like kind of hype people up to watch it. Like, do you expect him just? Oh, don't watch it. No, oh, everyone. It's the last thing you should be doing is watching one of our live streams. Like, it makes sense that Phil Spencer would be, you know, promoting his company's brand. Like, yeah, no, but the thing is, is typically, like, for example, um, he, he can, like, Gamescom, he doesn't do these clips, right? Um, they they could just do the Xbox Wire or, or let Aaron Greenberg or something like that. But the thing is, when Phil Spencer does it, it, it has more meaning. And so people's expectations get, like, super high. You know, we're not going to get Final Fantasy VII Remake announced at this thing. You know, we might get some Final Fantasy games. Um, and I think that's going to happen. Um, you know, Square Enix is probably going to show up in a big way. Uh, I think Metaphor, you know, show, does Metaphor, is Metaphor hours to come out in October? It comes out the same uh, the same day same that way. Dragon Ball uh, the Dragon Ball Z game does. Okay, I didn't know a Dragon Ball Z game was coming out. So you got yeah, Sparkling Zero. You you got uh, obviously th th there's going to be some Japanese uh, support. There's going to be some Game Pass uh, drops and whatnot. But don't expect like you know a Square Enix acquisition. Don't expect a Final Fantasy uh, you know seven remake. Uh, those games are allergic to Xbox. Um, so, uh, but you know, I do, you know, expect them to have a showing. I don't, I'm not expecting like a crazy showcase and whatnot. Um, but you know, that's, that's something going up that Xbox is participating in, uh, this year. Um, there, there's this interview that's out with, uh, Sarah Bond, uh, from Bloomberg. Now I went to go read it, but I didn't realize it costs like 150 a year to be subscribed <laughs> to Bloomberg. Uh, is it Just Bloomberg? Like or to re -upload it. Yeah, I, I need, yeah, I need somebody to re upload. So I, there was like story beats there. Um, and you know, um, did you get anything out of that? Like article? I, I, I don't know what was the big I didn't even thing look at it. that came out of it, but it was, you know, there was like some highlights of her saying like, you know, uh, not understanding what like, you know, you know, 
Phil Spencer like wants and her job is not to do what he says, but to do what he means. Um, I, I don't know, but um, that that's out there. I, I'm not willing to pay uh, to read it. I'm sure it's interesting. I think uh, Sarah Bond is, um, you know, you know, cool people. I think she's she, it's good for Xbox. I know they talked about, you know, handheld future generations and where Xbox stands now. Um, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know of any details up there. Like, again, I'm not willing to pay $150 to read the uh, article in, in, in its entirety. But, um, again, like, us at, you know, as Xbox fans, you know, we feel, we voiced our opinion several times on how we feel, how they're moving and whatnot. You know, them, you know, being, you know, in last place, I think the Xbox being outsold, like, I think, like, three to one. Um, yeah. They're... What's I was going to say, what's going to determine on whether or not they're even remotely right in this movement they're making yeah. is when we see the NPDs for this holiday. Because last holiday was horrible. Remember, they only sold like 700,000 in November or something like that? Mm -hmm. Like, it was a ridiculously low number. I don't know if it was that. I mean, don't quote me on that in particular, but it, it was not a good number. And if they can't beat that, those numbers... With Call of Duty and Game Pass, either just wrap it up, um, like pack it up. It's going to be the the thing is is that this is a couple of things going on. Obviously, you got this. Uh, you got PlayStation. You know who, who's been very successful this year, even without any games. Uh, you know with Astro Bot, which is going to be a game of the year contender, um, with their you know seven hundred dollar PlayStation Five Pro that's coming out in November. Um, they got, you know, they're going to take the power narrative. They're going to own a lot of, you know, YouTube, uh, clicks and whatnot because of their, it's going to be the hot thing. Um, Xbox is only putting out obviously in two terabyte Xbox series is constant. They didn't even time it right either. They're not doing like a call of duty bundle and stuff like that. Um, obviously one of their major pillars of this year got delayed. If about coming out early next year, it's not coming out this, uh, this year. Um, which left to me a glaring hole uh, in their releases. I think they started off the year. Um, I think Hellblade Two is the only like just Hellblade Two came out. I know Age of Mythology can't, came out. If you want to count that, it's a RTS. Um, Flight Sim comes out early November. Stalker Two comes out late November. Call of Duty comes out next month. Obviously, that's a big deal, but it's a it's a everyone game. It's not going to be considered like it's not an Xbox exclusive, but it's a big drop for Game Pass when you consider. Uh, so we are interested. There are some things to watch. Um, and then obviously Indiana Jones uh, comes out uh, early December, of course. Uh, but that release is spoiled because we all know that PlayStation's release is coming out early next year and probably going to have PS5 Pro enhancement. So it's, it's uh, Xbox has to. I don't know, man. Um, I, I would like for Xbox to really focus in on Xbox. But we know they're, you know, we're. Xbox is, is weird. I mean, we you're hearing news, you know, it, it, it's costing them billions to put third party games into Game Pass, and um, you know them being not selling as much as PlayStation and stuff like that. So there's many, many um, things to consider. Um, but we know we hope they turn it around. Yeah. I have a lot of hope that, you know, they make correct decisions. And I'm not saying I I know the correct decision. I don't know the correct decision. Mm -hmm. I've never ran a billion-dollar, trillion-dollar company. I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, but it's just, like, the inconsistency of what they're, they're doing to themselves. Yeah. It's like, you know, you, you're not being very transparent on some games going, some games not going. You're, be, you're making very wide-open statements so you can make wiggle room in the middle. It's just like, either decide what you want to do, mm -hmm. or don't decide. Because I don't like. I don't like this feeling that did Phil Spencer and them technically lie to us? No, Phil Spencer said that Indiana Jones and Starfield wasn't those first four games. But yeah. you cannot tell me with a straight face mm -hmm. that Indiana Jones was not in development during that statement. Yeah. That PlayStation version 
was definitely in development when he made that statement. So you are setting yourself up to fail, knowing that you're just wording stuff in a way where you're not technically lying, you're just withholding some of the truth. Yeah. Um, it's... Yeah, and that's where they shouldn't really... You know, we, we can't really take anything they say seriously or as fact you know what i mean especially if if they have to present it if you want to put when they when they're speaking to present something as like good news or um for xbox we can't really take it for what it is and and, and like all right let's really what's what's good for xbox fans or what's good for xbox fanboys is actually not good for xbox uh the business because they're not making money um and they have they need to make money the way they make money is by doing what well, hopefully they make money by doing this. But the thing is, it's just that in order to make the money they think they need to make or they think they're going to make is at the cost of devaluing the brand of Xbox. So um, in my in my opinion, you know what I mean? But, you know, people I think the money bags, the money bag people just want money to the degree where they're not caring what kind of damage they do to the brand. Yeah. They just see this is a quick way of making a buck. And I do mm. truly believe that some of these people have no idea what they're doing in this industry. They don't know this industry. And they're trying to, to run this industry like they ran other industries, which a lot of industries that Microsoft has tried to get in, especially in the entertainment industry, they ran it straight to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh... it's like, look, look, look at how they ran Windows. Straight into the ground. The Windows phone, I meant. Like, <laughs> straight into the ground. Anything they do in entertainment, they run straight into the ground. <laughs> it's it, it's true, but like it's like yeah, the, the no thing. But it's true. <laughs> it, it, it it it's true um, that they. I don't know if they ran it straight to the ran it straight to the ground or if they given it up prematurely. You know, all the other consumer-based stuff, I the feel like they reason, just... The only reason they gave it uh, up prematurely is because they ran it into the ground. Yeah, because I, I don't think uh, Mixer had any business, you know, going away. Yeah, another like thing that. I forgot about Mixer. Yeah. That that was that was sad. Because uh, I was ready to make the convert, you know, I was ready to make like build a streaming platform on uh, Mixer, knowing that Microsoft was backing it and they were pouring millions upon millions of dollars into it just to be like, ah, we're we're done. Everybody can go to Facebook and Twitch. I'm like, really? Okay. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. kind of did it mad disrespectful. Yeah. Like, just one random day, it's over. It's a wrap. Yeah. 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 And that that's why like people are like, oh, they would never, you know, stop the the console support. Nothing anyone tells me. Now, look, is it a lot harder to get rid of the console, uh, the Xbox as a console, than it was Mixer? Yes. But don't mm -hmm. act like that's not on the table. And at the very least, we will have the, the like, it was like, what, 2015 to 17, where they wasn't putting any money in the brand at all. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. There was no games being developed for like a year and a half because they didn't know what they wanted to do with the brand. And then, and pretty much in the in the middle, essentially and you could, of the generation, and, and you could kind of see that already happening. Where's the marketing cut? Yeah, it's um now after when that period happened, right? And then when did the acquisition start? It was twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen. Um. Um. 18, I think, is when Bethesda was bought. No, no. Bethesda was like 2021. 20. It was like announced in September 2020. And then I think well, no, 18's when they bought all those studios. Yeah, the smaller one, yep. And then 20 is when they bought Bethesda. And 20, the end of 21 is, I think, when they bought ABK. Or 2020, January 2022, they announced that they were buying ABK. And it closed in like October of 23. Um... The thing is, is that with those acquisitions, it's like they haven't given themselves time to do anything with them, to try to reap benefits of those acquisitions. And I think 
that's why we're all upset that they decided, you know, they're going to, you know, make these decisions to go like third party order, you know, to like not go all in the way we want them to. Um, right now I'm pulling up some like transcripts from that Dina, uh, Dina Bass, Sarah Bond article. I think Tom Warren took this, um, he says this, um, he said, a fun little antidote from Dina Bass's Bloomberg profile of Xbox president Sarah Bond. You can read full article feature here. The, again, it costs money to do so. But it says, at first, Bond's, Bonds and Spencer's personal, personal styles clashed, and the two sought out Microsoft Human Resources chief Kathleen Hogan for coaching, an unusual step that Hogan found admirable. Bond recalls Spencer and others at Microsoft telling her that her tendency to push the envelope and not let something go was new to them. She says she found that Spencer's communication style sometimes left her unsure of what he actually wanted from her. At one point, she stuck a post-it note to her computer with some advice about interacting with him. I'm not being paid to do what he says, it reads. I'm being paid to do what he meant. So, once again, man, how? Oh, my God. So you mean to tell me that not only are they not being transparent with us, they ain't even being transparent with each other. How <laughs> smooth. You sit there and you hit me up and say, we're going to do the podcast. You don't tell me when, you don't tell me where, you don't tell me what day. I'm like, okay, I just have to assume he meant this day. <laughs> no one, uh, they, 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 they too far gone, man. Guys, go to PC. Oh, Go man. To PC. Uh, stop. It, nah, it, it, but Bond doesn't it, even know what, what, what Phil Spencer wants. Are you going to sit here and tell me from a straight face that, that that's good? Uh, no, it's not good because Phil Spencer, for the most part, doesn't, uh, doesn't seem too sure on what his plans are. So him giving direction to someone else or setting expectations for someone else, I can understand why how that could have transpired. Yeah. No, I don't see too many. If she had to put a post-it note on her on her monitor, this happens all the time. And she had to. That is literally a mental note that she put on her monitor that says, "It's not me, it's him." That's literally what yeah. she had to put on her monitor. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> but that that was one of the again. That was the only thing that I saw out of that article. I know there's a lot more there, but. Um, when it, uh, in regards to um, when it comes to like people posting things uh, from um, the article, that's the only thing that I saw. Um, I'm just checking to see if there's anything else uh, coming through uh, from that article. But um, I mean, we're it's a weird situation. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say this right because. Gaming is in a, is in this is in this this space where you know, like you know, there's a lot of games that came out, um, a lot of things that are coming out. Um, I haven't indulged in a lot of stuff. Like I said, the the, the my the three primary games I played, obviously Star Wars Outlaws, which has uh, unfortunately has been flopping. Even though personally, I I enjoyed the game. I had my flaws and things I disagree with. I but I thoroughly enjoyed that game. Uh, Space Marine 2, which is, I think, the success, most successful Warhammer game or the fastest selling Warhammer game to date. Um, and, um, you know, that's, you know, doing what it's doing. Astrobot, um, again, uh, you know, I don't, it came out of, uh, I don't want to say it came out of nowhere, but um, it, it, it's pleasantly surprising uh, with this performance. Um, and now we got you know DRDR oh, which is out, um, and we got Starfield, uh, the sh- uh, Shattered Space comes out next week. The expansion um, looks promising. I, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, my only thing I'm having trouble with is like, how do I play the game? Do I play it as my as my star? Uh, what do you? As my Starborn, or I'm more like New Game Plus Three, maybe, or 
do I play it as the new new save that I started with a completely different character where I'm sort of in the middle of the game. I'm in the middle of the uh the store uh the middle of the story. Um I just hadn't haven't been as, as ambitious on that uh that point cuz I think I was trying to earn like achievements that I missed that didn't pop during the review period. So I'm trying to figure out like what do I do? To, is it meant to be played as a starborn, or are you meant to play it as a regular constellation person? Like, and it looked like. Well, I mean, go ahead. I was gonna say. I mean, you're technically a starborn, but in the story, unless you tell people you're a starborn, they don't really know. They don't really acknowledge it too much. If I remember correctly, I didn't play a lot of uh, the, the, uh, you know, the, the, the. The new game plus mm -hmm. uh for those of you that don't know uh spoiler alert once you beat starfield you become a starborn it, it's got a unique new game plus i will say that it does got a unique new game plus mm -hmm. could have implemented a little bit better but it does got a new a unique uh new game plus but i don't think it matters because i don't think they expect you to beat the game and then go back through and beat the game again they probably mm -hmm. expect you to yeah. get to like a certain part of the story to have it unlocked yeah but you know it takes place all on one planet um it, it takes place all on one planet and like sure you can leave at any po point in time but you won't be leaving the planet to complete that quest everything's taking place within that you know area it looks like all fleshed out um and I'm, I'm just looking forward to playing something new in starfield and the thing is is that people playing starfield with this new uh, uh shattered dreams expansion it's getting a different game than what we got at launch. Now, I still the launch Starfield was good enough for me for my game of the year. It was this one. We now have rovers, a vehicle, a land vehicle we can drive on each which planet. Is huge, which is huge. We now, if you're playing on console, have a host of performance options. So you could play at 40 FPS, you could play at 60 FPS, or you could play uh, at unlock FPS in both performance mode or quality mode and that's for both xboxes series x and series s and since then the game has gotten a graphical upgrade so the game looks actually in a game i thought i was impressed with the game at the time because at the time they launched but it actually looks better today so and then the menu system is a little bit, bit uh better than um the fast travel system is better they did a lot of quality quality of life stuff uh to assist uh with the game so it's a it's it's a better game today than it did at launch and, and you're about to get the shattered dreams expansion which is a reason to play it so when you're, you're jumping in you're you're jumping into a game that's like oh this is much better and like I, again i've been playing a little bit of starfield i think after i wrapped up star wars outlaws i jumped back into starfield on my new uh character and it's like but i'm still at that point it's like damn do i do i am i am i going to use this save file or am i going to use my starborn save file to uh to enter the shattered Shattered Dreams, but I technically I forget this. Can you help me out? Starborn, is you do you maintain your level or do you go back to level one? I can't remember. I'm gonna check because I need to get to a level. I think the highest level you can get to is what a hundred? I think you maintain your level. Yeah, reason, it, it, I, I might like I might go based off that just so I can have my level. I think what what bugs me is that out during my Starborn playthrough. After like the third one, I don't have all the weapons that I had. I had a host of weapons, but once you start the new game plus, you don't have all those weapons anymore. And it's like, damn, bro! I like I like I spent all those all the money, all the credits that I had for some of those weapons, and those were some good weapons, man. There were some real good weapons. So, um, but shout out to you know Starfield and Bethesda. Looking forward to playing Shattered Dreams on the thirtieth uh, of this of this month, but. Definitely. Uh, Dragon Age is in the news. Uh, I know there was like some reveal. Yeah, that... tell me what's going on with this because I have no clue what's going on. The only thing I've seen is that they've had like, they have the, um, they, they have the ability when you're editing your character uh, or making your character, especially female characters, you could, you know, decide the max size of breasts and the max size of glute, which is the ass. <sighs> It's like it's flat to flatter. You know what I mean? There's like 
it's like, why is that option there if you're not going to allow anybody to put masks back there? But it's like they don't want. I guess the game has something against voluptuous, uh, voluptuous uh, woman because. When I saw, I was like, "Yo, I I, I don't have a problem with it," but that's kind of irritating. You're gonna make an RPG and you're gonna literally everything's like it's flatter, flatter, flatter. It's like flat, flatter, flattest. That's the that's literally the, the gauge of when you're editing the you know the individual, especially if it's a female from like the glute, which is the butt, or the or the the chest. Uh, you you can't like there's they don't let you. They don't let you, I guess, customize. Uh, PC obviously, when they do mod it, they're they're gonna change, they're gonna fix that. But like, as of the game, it's like literally flat, flatter, or flattest, and the max gauge is flat. <laughs> I guess to me, like stuff like that doesn't bother me, but I can understand when you're like doing a character development. Yeah, like that stuff is a characteristic of yeah. a person. Yeah. So why can't you? Uh, you know, control it to to your to your heart desire. You can literally control how big your junk is in Cyberpunk. Like, and you you don't it like. It doesn't matter in the game, but they let you do it. So it, it's just like you know, if someone wants to run run around with like triple D's. Why 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 stop them? Who cares? They bought your game. Yeah, and then like the classes, the uh, the clothes. And the faction classes and stuff like that, they're all like people are gonna hate it. It's like the whole you know, blue hair. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> it's it's the things that people don't like when in, in video games in terms of the customizations. Um, I'm not saying this game is gonna be bad. I've never been an avid fan of Dragon Age. I mean, I'm always willing to try it, willing to play it. I, I like EA. I like the that they're able to put out you no know, major games, you know, on an annual basis. This just seems like something I would try. But I'm just gonna say this, you know. Remember when we were debating, you know, release dates when which when should Avowed and Starfield and stuff like that release? Ain't no way I'm running away from Dragon Age Vanguard, and no way I'm running from Assassin's Creed shadows which respectfully they're they're, they're going to be good games but these games ain't dominating any other franchise like these games you know there's been times where you know games like halo launched against alongside like assassin's creed and and beat it you know what i mean uh or uh there's big games where uh like games like sea of thieves i think even went toe-to-toe with like a you know a far cry game like far cry 5 whatever and did well uh Dragon Age is not like in these days. I I I just I don't know if those still remain true as why they delayed those games. But Dragon Age, I mean, should, shouldn't have been a reason that any game uh, got delayed. Um, I'm still hoping that uh, again, you know, I I would have rather played Avowed than any of the games that we got come in. Um, yeah, same here. But there are some hands-on previews that happen with Dragon Age. There, there uh, shout out to Kami Okami thirteen. He says uh, hands-on previews. The quotes that are coming out. Eurogamer says feels like the series Mass Effect two moment. Oh shit, that's a big deal. Is the people that people consider that the best one? Yeah, but you know, once again, you're out to see who who were saying these things. Here's the thing, mm -hmm. I've learned like throughout these scenarios where it's like. When it comes to these previews, mm -hmm. it's not about like how many they sent out, it's who they sent them to. Yeah. Uh, one thing I will say is, Mr. Maddie Play said that he liked the game. Okay. Uh, so, I do trust his opinion and okay. his input. Absolutely. Uh, somebody, a uh, uh, game rant says a definite gaudy contender, and then IGN says the character creator I've always wanted. So, uh, okay. Bioware at its most confident, GameSpot said. Now, GameSpot is very harsh with their reviews. So, uh, they're pretty much, if they're saying it, so yeah, this could be, you know, if if things go well, it's this is probably could rate highly, and this could probably take one of those PlayStation games out of the Game of the Year nomination. Um but yeah, so it's definitely this is. I feel like it's going to be a, a polarizing thing. You're going to have a lot of people purists 
of just video games who love it, right? And then you're gonna have those, uh, you're gonna have the grifters, you're gonna have the politic gamers that come in who wants to, you know, highlight how D, how DEI infested the game is, and they're gonna try to bring it down. Uh, if it overcomes that, uh, the, that polarizing moment, uh, you no, know, it could definitely have its moment. Like I said, I'm always looking for a good game to get, uh, play and get get lost into. Um, I have been disappointed in this year overall. Uh, but then again, that's probably on my fault because I didn't play a lot of the releases that came out this year. You know, the only highlights, you know, obviously Hellblade 2, as it stands right now, still currently my uh, game of the year. Star Wars Outlaws, enjoyed that thoroughly. Space Marine, t- Marine 2 was okay. Um, and then... Uh, I mean, DRDR is just a, a just a remaster, but it, it it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I haven't had a chance to play Astro Bot yet. I haven't uh, cooked that game um, up a, uh, a little yet. I played the beta for New World. I don't think that's going to do anything for me. Um, but yeah, like I would definitely jump into like Vanguard. I think I think the the close out the year between like I think I'm gonna have a good time with Call of Duty. The beta was amazing for me. Um, I, I think I'm going to like Assassin's Creed Shadows, where they said this game is smaller than Odyssey and uh, Valhalla, and it's more in line with Assassin's Creed Origins, which was definitely one of my favorites of the the recent you know three games that they put out. Um, so it's, it was more condensed, more concise, but in, in, in scope. So you probably beat the main quest in somewhere between like 40 hours with a little bit of bloat that they add to it uh, in like side quests and stuff like that. Um, so I think I'm a like Assassin's Creed Shadows. I think I'm going to like Call of Duty. I think I'm going to like Indiana Jones. I think I'm going to like uh, Dragon Age Vanguard um, uh, to a degree. Uh, this Is it a multiplayer focus or is it single player focus? What is this? Uh most likely the base game is going to be single player. I don't know if they have a multiplayer infrastructure because um, Inquisition did, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play it. I'm there day one. You're day so, one. Okay. Yeah. And you try to try to try to get us in there with the you know the, the reviews, man. Like try to try to get I'll us try. in there with I don't the really reviews got, for sure. Actually, I do have EA contacts. I know the uh, yeah. the person in charge of Skate. Yeah. Like I've met him personally. Like. Uh, so maybe I can like swing in there a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, we actually do. I, I do have a couple EA contacts. I'll start reaching out. I reached out for Dragon Ball though. Ew. Okay. Yeah, I reached out for Dragon Ball. Yeah, they can hold that. Um, but yeah, that's nah. gonna get on you, man. <laughs> put, put some L smooths in the comment section for smooth talking shit about Dragon Ball. That's that 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 that's a that's a sin. That. that you you belong to be stoned to death. Yeah, no, I never uh, dealt with, um, never really thoroughly got into a Dragon Ball uh, game, but um, nah, like there. So there are some you know promising titles throughout the end of the year that I think there's going to be a uh, uh, extremely um, decent um, that I'm looking forward to, and um, I, I think like I said, the, the main four I think is like I said, Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed, Indiana Jones. I mean, I know Stalker 2 is coming out. Not really my vibe, uh, but I'll definitely give it a try, being that it's on Game Pass. Uh, also, with the uh, Flight Sim, there was uh, there was some breakdowns about that. That seemed like it's more of a gamified uh, game this time around. It's not going to be as huge. I think only 30 gigs. Um, so it looks like they're using a lot of like tech to... Um, to um, uh, implement the game where it's not the the, the file sizes and it, it, it's heavy. So, um, good year ahead. Good, good, a decent year ahead. Um, I thought it, it had the potential to be better than twenty twenty three, but I was wrong. Um, yeah, twenty twenty three is probably one of the best gaming years in probably the past ten years. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think if 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 I'm missing. Anything? Uh, do you have uh, any uh, updates or anything you want we got to the, talk about? I mean, the the last couple of videos I made, we got the Power World being sued thing. Mm. Um, by Pokemon got, Go and Nintendo. Yeah, we got the Ben Studio. Why well, haven't made this video? But uh, the it's rumored that there's gonna be a Days Gone remake or remaster. Oh no, no. How about the Horizon <laughs> uh, Zero Dawn remake or 
I mean, we kind of knew that was happening. I mean, yeah. we could talk about, like, in general, like, when it comes to, you know, PlayStation in general with their remakes. Like, did you see that Colin Moriarty thing yesterday? I keep seeing clips of it. Uh, like, I haven't watched it, but it's I, right now I think somebody just put it in our Weapon Wheel uh, chat. Uh, like, what did, can you give me a brief a brief me on that? Essentially, the Herman Host was part of it, but here's the thing: like, I made a video, and I will, uh, you know, say I made the mistake of saying it was entirely Jim Ryan. Yeah, people go, "This was Herman Host." Jim Ryan, if my memory collect, was he not above Herman Host? He was. When he was there. And he was there. Yes. So you gonna sit there and tell me someone below him made that decision? Okay. What well, even if Herman Host pushed for that more? You cannot tell me that Jim Ryan wasn't what wasn't co-signing everything because it went through. So it's just like they spent four hundred million dollars, allegedly. Nothing's been confirmed, but when it comes to Colin, Colin loves the PlayStation brand. He wouldn't say stuff like this if it wasn't true to some degree. Absolutely, they spent four hundred million dollars on Concord. Yeah, and apparently. Yeah, and that's just Concord. That's not including what it cost to build uh, to buy the studio, which I'm assuming was at least a hundred million. That's mm -hmm. not assuming uh, the marketing because I don't think that four hundred million is part of the marketing. Maybe it was. Maybe like a hundred million of that was part of the marketing, mm -hmm. uh, but you know we don't know. That's not that's not taking into account factions development costs, Spider Man's development costs, mm -hmm. whatever they worked on Twisted Metal. I would say. It's very real that PlayStation lost almost a billion dollars on this games as a service uh, stretch. Now, maybe it's le it's it's more close to five hundred million than a billion, but it's it's close. It's close, and, and it's just like, look, Xbox can deal with messing up to this degree on what they've done in the past. PlayStation, not so much. And you know, this is one of those scenarios where you know I'm t being told stuff behind closed doors where. It's like, it makes sense why they stuck to remakes and remasters. Mm -hmm. It makes sense why uh, they continue to uh, nickel and dime you, raising prices of everything. It makes sense why they went through with the PlayStation 5 Pro, knowing that they really didn't need it at this point. Yep. Because they're trying to do whatever they can to milk as much of this Concord money back into their pocket as possible. Yeah, like... And that's probably why they fought for that, to cancel that Call of Duty uh, uh, yeah. the the ABK acquisition because they probably make a good portion of the money they make every year from just that thirty percent of Call of Duty yeah. and the fact yeah. that not necessarily you know they it, they're like okay Xbox says they're going to give it to us that's fine but PlayStation's looking at it right now they're being nice but when's when Phil Spencer and Sarah Bond retire? Or someone changes leaderships or something drastic. You don't know if the people coming in at the other end is going to be as nice as the people running now. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's true. The uh, amount of... Uh, the As far as like... Um, call a... Um, the Call of Duty situation is that... Yeah, that 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 is a threat. You know what I mean. I think the initial fear is even when they make it multi plat it's like okay, you know, how many people are going to run over to Xbox or PC to play this on air since they won't cost them, you know, a hundred dollars, um, to um, to play the game. You know what I mean. So um, it's it, and that's why I'm curious to see. But again, Xbox isn't like leveraging this yet. To their to, to the ability they can because I would be marketing this at the woo woohoo. You know what I mean? If it was me, I would have been releasing the two terabyte Xbox, the all digital Xbox Series X, uh, the release at the release date of Black Ops like six. They would just be releasing on like the same day, like uh, special controller, all headset, all that. I would have been doing matter of fact, th these. They're not taking advantage as they they really can. Um, should at least got a custom headset and a custom controller, bro. For real. Well, it's not even custom headset. I don't know what they're legally allowed and what they're not legally allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But it's just like just bundling that sucker with the console, just that. Yeah. Would have made tremendous sense. Just bundling. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe, so there was this article uh, September 20th. That was yesterday. Eurogamer said uh, Silent Hill 2 remake will be a PS5 console exclusive for one year. Um, so I guess that was confirmed. Um I'm trying to get access to this uh, game. I I, I want I haven't played my PlayStation all year. I think Astro Bot uh, should have been the first game I tried, but no, dude. I have Wukong. I got that I on think PC. I played two, three games. I played three games. I played Wukong, Final Fantasy, and Astro Bot. Well, Dead Rising. I oh. am playing that too. So on PlayStation. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, on normal scenario, normal case scenarios, like I would would be like preparing to get rid of my PlayStation 5 for a PS5 Pro, but I just don't think... they What the GameStop giving you? Like $200 for it? And that means another $400 you have to come up with. I'm not sure if... I, I, I Again, I would hate to spend all that money and, and... I think it's more than 200 I think it is in the 300s. 300 Alright, all right. And then, and, and then that might be... That might be worth it. Yeah, keep talking and I'll look. Yeah, that might be... Might be worth it. Like I, you know, you want to be a, a the, part of the it, but physical it's physical version. The the physical version, which I do, I have a, a physical version. What I would what I would end up doing is I would trade in the physical version of the PS5, which I have on the living room. Give my son right, so. my digital, and then upgrade the and then and buy the PS5 Pro. So if you trade it in and mm -hmm. store credit with a pro uh, with the pro membership, mm -hmm. you get three hundred and thirty dollars, and a regular value is three hundred. And if you did it with cash with the pro, you get two thirty. And if you did it with cash with the regular value, you get two ten. All right, so three thirty. But it's not bad. It's not bad trading values. Yeah, let me see this. Let me see this. Uh, I was thinking about after. Um, after I beat this, uh, after I beat Dead Rising, because I don't see another reason why I would turn on my PlayStation. Yeah. Just trading that sucker in and just getting a pro, because it's like, you know, even if I had to pay, like, at that point, you know, you're not, I mean, it's still, you're paying, you're paying a good portion. Yeah, because even, with, that even with taxes, hold on, what's six ninety nine right, plus 6.625% uh, is uh, in taxes? Uh, is still paying like four fifty. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's about like yeah. Hold on, and that uh, tax is going to change regarding what state you live in. So. Yeah, six ninety nine plus zero point. I don't know. Probably won't do six, it then. Two five percent. Oh, I was thinking geez. about it, like, do like it'd be different if I used the uh, the PlayStation Five more. Mm -hmm. But I've been playing a lot. Like the only time I ever play anything on PlayStation is not an exclusive. Yeah, is if like something that I've been giving review access to, they only have PlayStation codes. Yeah, hold on. So seven fifty minus three hundred thirty dollars. You know what I mean? That's still four hundred and twenty dollars. So it's like buying a um, four hundred and twenty dollars. Like. I'm trying to think. Yeah, um, almost would want to. I will almost need to trade both and both my PlayStations in uh, to take advantage of that uh, that tall bastard. Um, yeah. So what I would do is, I I'd consider it. I definitely consider it. Um, considering I got a nah, PlayStation extra controller, um, some games, some physical games I can buy, and um, yeah. No biggie. And it's two terabytes, which is... I would be forced... I would literally be forced to play my PlayStation 5 more at that point. And which I, I would at that point. Um, it just wouldn't be... Uh, I wouldn't be... I would be picking and choosing what I would... Um, play it. I'm, I, I, again, the price I'm against, but I, if I can get the price, if I can... And, and I, I apologize for the Planet Xbox viewers. But if I could get... A, if I could find a way to get the price of the PlayStation 5 Pro lowered to under four hundred dollars with trade-ins and maybe game pass uh, game spot point game stop points i got or whatever i mean I'd you could probably trade your controllers in i'm I'd, sure that would knock a yeah a bulk of it all i'd probably consider that yeah and you could trade in the elite i don't need the elite controller i'm, I'm gonna get rid of this shit i don't use it yeah i'll get rid of this you think they'll give me money for this i can look 
All right, yeah. so hold on, hold on. Put, put a calculator up. Let, 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 let's see <laughs> what we could get this up to if you yeah. wanted to. So 330 right, for the so, PlayStation 5, and then what's okay, the value you, of do a... Do you have the pro thing? Do you have the, the, the pro membership? I do. Okay, okay. So you said an Xbox Elite controller? Yep. How much is that? Okay, hold on. So pro controller. All right, so we're looking for controllers. <laughs> we're doing this on. Do you have a? Do you, yeah, we might as well. Do you have a switch? I. Do you use your? Do I don't you use, use your pro controller any. Which one? Which pro controller? My switch pro controller. Yeah. Um. I. I have one. I have one. Twenty two bucks. Twenty two dollars for the pro. What about the elite controller? How much is that worth? And an extra dual sense. How much is extra dual sense? I have, I have an extra dual sense. Extra uh, dual sense or thirty bucks. All right, thirty dollars. And at this point, should I? Would I be getting rid of my Switch? How about a Switch? A Nintendo Switch. A Nintendo Switch? You're gonna get rid of your Nintendo? I don't Switch? play it. My son barely plays it. Uh, which one is it? The OLED or yeah, no? It? It's not an OLED. It's a regular freaking Animal Crossing Nintendo Switch. Uh, you're looking at about 150. All right, plus 150. Oh, in the controller, the Elite controller. So Xbox right now I'm at for 532 without the controller. Ooh, is it the Series Two? Yeah, Elite Series Two. Oh, a hundred bucks. What? Yeah, bro. Bucks. I do that. I that's six hundred and thirty-two dollars. I I could get rid of that all. When's it the PlayStation Five Pro go on pre-order? The twenty-six. I think. I don't Shit. Know. I think timing's gonna be the, all right. So I could get. I'll get rid of everything the Nintendo, the controllers and whatnot to for that portion of the pre-order, and then by the time the PS the PS Five Pro comes out. I can use that to pretty near pay off and then I come out of pocket only like $40. That would be about 100 after taxes. 6 30, 632 minus 750. Yeah, yeah, a little under there. Yeah, that that's that's more than Yeah, I could do it. I could do it. Do they take rogue allies? <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> You, you, you know the most valuable thing I probably have is some physical Xbox One games that are li uh, still licensed through uh, Activision that are delisted. Yeah, you talk about the ones that um, J Dub help you get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that. No, I never got those because those aren't backwards compatible. But the stuff like Deadpool, Transformers, I have, I have two Transformers. Oh, stuff you bought on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Because uh, you, 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 you know, much, GameStop you, is going you, you to a buy retro. Games off of ignorant people for like pennies. Okay. Yeah, and and Game Pass is going not Game Pass. GameStop is going to more so a retro version now to try to keep up. Um, so those, those games, games will have will value. Up in price for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, I might have to. Uh, yeah, especially the Deadpool game. Yeah, you want me to tell you what that Deadpool gets right now? How much? How much is it? Oh yeah, you gonna trade everything in? Man. Yeah, I got. Remember, I got Deadpool. I also got the Amazing Spider-Man, two. The Amazing Spider-Man two, which is which okay, is a what, rare game. What is? It's considered retro now, isn't it? Mm hmm. Okay, so Deadpool. Mm hmm. What's it called? Xbox three sixty. Xbox One. It's an Xbox One game. Mm hmm. I don't think they consider that retro yet because nothing, nothing's popping up. All right. Uh, what about Amazing Spider-Man 2? A video game. It's okay. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, damn. 30 bucks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, 27, technically. What was the uh, Deadpool? It's just dead. It's just it's the, that Deadpool game that came out that Activision pu uh, published. Yeah, it's not popping up at all. Yeah. Um. There's that Transformers game by Platinum Games. Transformers. It looked like it's like cartoon. Uh, is it the Fall of Cybertron? Is that the cartoon looking one? Look like it looked like a legit or cartoon. 
Devastation. Devastation. That's what it is. Oh my god, twenty two bucks. <laughs> That game pure trash too, but it's worth money. Uh, and and then hold on, hold the PS4 on. version's worth it. Hold up, no, the Xbox version's worth six. <laughs> Where did he go? Did he just walk up, leave the show? No, that seems I, I grabbed, very I grabbed some games. That are that are like all delisted. All right, so you said this was twenty two dollars, right? Uh, this is mm-hmm. act, just to give you guys a heads up, right? This game, play this game, and play the Sony Marvel Spider Man two. These are literally the two same games, just different graphics, bro. It's the same storyline. It's literally the same story. This game oh, didn't you're trying to start something. No, 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 no. This game didn't Let's follow the. Next the game. This golden game didn't follow the movie. It literally, this is, I feel like this Insomniac Spider Man follow up literally ripped this whole entire uh, campaign and some of the move where you, you, how you carry people, free people from burning buildings and whatnot, and you take them to the ambulance. Shut up. All right. Ninja Turtles, Activision game. Mutants in Manhattan. How much is that worth? Stop it. We're, we're, gonna, we're about to buy a PlayStation 5 Pro. On some, on some. Stop. Okay. It's um. Ninja Turtles, Mutants of Manhattan. Yeah. It's the Xbox One version. Yeah. Eleven bucks. All right, eleven bucks. All right. So the value's not that great. I might as well keep that. Well, the PlayStation version seventeen. Okay. Uh, no, nah, I'm not. I'm a. I'm uh blue. I, I platinum this game. I think I platinum this game. Blue, what? Bluey, the video the game. Video game. Mm-hmm. That game better not be worth anything. Why? Eleven bucks. Why? <laughs> okay. All right. So, what about Minecraft Story Mode? You know, this has been delisted. I, I don't think this is a gem. I don't think I would get rid of it. This is me and my one of my, me and my son's favorite game. But I probably this is probably the only physical game I would hold on to for like forever and ever. But just in case, I want to know if there's a value to it. The complete edition? Yep, it's Minecraft Story Mode. Uh, Xbox One. $16. <laughs> the complete adventures, yeah, $16. And then uh, you can get like a you can get like a hundred and some change for all these games. You look this That's one up. Eight. This is eight dollars. Yeah, but the the PS4 version for some reason seventeen. Because it's probably more of a rarity. Um, hold on, uh. man. This this man's getting up again. How many of these old games does he got? He's probably gonna bring back some like Not Snoopy sad. Paul Grand Adventure or something like that. This game I bought and I can't even play because I don't have an Xbox 360. But Spider Man Three, this is a rare game. Uh, for the three six, oh, mm-hmm. eighteen bucks, eighteen dollars. And that just trade all those games in seven hundred and thirty. So that would pay off the PlayStation. The, everything I listed will play off the PlayStation Five Pro. Or if they change the prices, or if uh, they like change the prices a little the bit, yeah. a little bit differently, I, I would go do that shit today. You would just and trade just, all in store credit. Yeah, and then just, uh, you could probably actually trade it in, and, and have that store credit. Because my thing is, I'd hate for getting closer to the actual like the twenty third or twenty fourth. Yeah, they just drastically reduce the prices of the PS five. Yeah, that, that'd be crazy. Matter of fact, where's my phone? I'm going to call GameStop um, and find out when they're taking the pre-orders. No, but, put, 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 call GameStop on the podcast. Yep. Uh, ask, the, ask them how many people has traded in PlayStations for the Pro. Okay. And ask them when are they doing it. I'm kind of curious. We, we doing this live. Live in the podcast, man. This is, this is why you watch us. I know a lot of you guys hate us. I know you can't stand us. This is why you watch us, man. I cannot believe he's got those old ass games. But the he's not getting what he 
I don't know. He bought a bunch of them mad cheap, so he's probably making a profit off those games. One of them he paid serious money for, though, so he might break even. I don't know. What did you pay for those uh, old games, Smooth? Um, like I think ten to like thirty bucks. I thought one of them you paid like fifty. Nah, nah, no. Nah, I think they. Uh, I was going to. It was one of those. Uh, it was going to be a couple of those Spider-Man games, uh, but they weren't backwards compatible, so I didn't buy them. Oh, okay. So you're making money off these. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to call them and put them on speaker. Thank you for calling GameStop, where you can receive up to an extra. Yeah, and I would ask when the the trade in thing is, and ask how many. Well, ask when the tra- when when's the pre order. Then ask how much for the PlayStation 5 Pro, I mean for the PlayStation 5 and trading, and then ask how many PlayStations have been traded in. Put it up to you to speak, uh, to the mic. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. They're open, right? Yeah. Thank you for calling GameStop. At this time, all stores and seats are currently assisting other customers. Damn. Please call back in a few minutes. They're busy. I, I would call another one, but I, I'm not going to go to another one. This one's right around yeah, the corner. Is what it is. We we can go to end the show anyway. Yeah, How listen, long have we been going? An hour and six minutes. How about on brand for us. Yeah, absolutely. But appreciate you guys for tuning into another episode of Playing Xbox Podcast. Thank you to Attic, uh, always amazing uh, co-host. Uh, we will be with you guys uh, next week and uh, keep a lock on the channel. I haven't. I know I've been saying I want a to, to launch a second channel, which is just streaming, but. I think I need some, I need some graphics for it. Um, I do want to launch AI, a man. AI. second. Ch- I, I, show me how to do it if it, if that's the case. Did AI do your graphics? No. All right AI, then. So how can AI. you recommend me to use something that you haven't AI. used yourself? I didn't need I didn't need graphics done when I did that. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you guys on the next episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. Thank you. As always, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We're out of here. Peace.